Hi, my name is Brian Caffo, and welcome to the Coursera Data Products class, first lecture on Plotly. So Plotly is a platform for creating interactive graphics and doing analyses. However, we're going to focus on Plotly as it interacts with R. So in this way, it'll be not unlike what we're getting out of R charts and Google Viz. The difference is Plotly will interact with a specific web platform. So the first step on Plotly is to create an account or link Plotly with one of your existing accounts like GitHub. I created a new account. After that, I think probably it's best to click on the Learn button here. And then it goes through a bunch of documentation on Plotly. I'm interested in R, so I'm going to go down here. And I'm particularly interested because I've been kind of into ggplot2 lately, clicking on how to interact with, between Plotly and ggplot. So clicking on the Getting Started button here takes you to a web page that I found particularly useful for getting started with the Plotly R API. So first you need to have installed DevTools, which I think at this point in the class you should have already done. Then you want to do Library DevTools. And then you want to install the Plotly package from GitHub, and that's in the location R OpenSci forward slash Plotly given here. Then you want to initialize Plotly with library Plotly, and then it will load some other packages like rcurl and rjson, etc. Next, the Plotly website gives you a set credential command. You should run that command in your R console, and you should only have to do that once. If you can't find it, and it will give you the correct command with the correct key if you're logged into Plotly. If you need to set a new key for whatever the reason, for example, if you accidentally show your key to thousands of people during a data products class, then you can click on your name in Plotly to settings and then reset the key. So here you actually get a brief glimpse into my actual day job. So what I do most of the time during the day is think about so-called brain connectivity. So here's the results of these sorts of large dimensional decompositions that we like to think about. And I'm using RStudio's manipulate, and this is a nice motivation for RStudio's manipulate function. Here it sort of flips through latent factors of this decomposition, and this flips through axial slices of the brain, and this changes the statistical threshold that I'm using to control the overlay. So at any rate, that's what I actually do during the day. I would also add here, let me show you an example that motivates why you might need something like Plotly. Here's another use of the manipulate function. These are the, so those are the images. There's some associated loadings that occur. And here, what you want, often want to do is flip through the loadings in this case. And if you see an instance like this where there's a lot of nice variability in the loadings, but there's one subject that's sticking way out It'd be nice if I could just hover over that one subject, like here, and figure out what subject that is. Because then when I go back to the original brain imaging data, there's usually a mistake. Like this one, for sure, there's probably some mistake for this person's brain image at some point. And so I'd like some interactivity where if I hover my mouse over this so I don't have to code to figure out what that one is because I'm going back and forth. And things like Plotly and R charts and Google Viz are particularly good at that. So let's go through an example. So on the GitHub repository, I have this data set, CourseraData.RDA, which you can load up. Up here, I've already loaded it up. And that contains enrollment numbers for our Coursera classes before we started the data science specialization. Then I would do library plotly, and then library ggplot2, because I want to create a ggplot. So I'm going to create my ggplot where my Y is enrollment, my X is which class it is, and my fill is which offering it was, first offering, second offering, third offering, and then I give it my data frame, my data, okay? And then that creates the sort of blank ggplot canvas, and then I'm gonna add a bar graph where the statistic is the identity statistic, and there I'm gonna plot it. So there it is nice and in the RStudio plotting window. Though, of course, notice when I hover over the bars, nothing happens. Okay, so let's now try and import it into Plotly. What I do is I create a variable that is the output of the Plotly command. And then if I were to run this command right here, 
take the variable that I output, do ggplotly, which is this interface between ggplot and plotly, and then I pass it my ggplot, which I confusingly named g, and I run that, it will take me to plotly, it will open up a new browser window with that plot in it. And I'm going to assign it to a variable, and the reason why I'm going to assign it to a variable, because I might want to refer back to this, is you can grab the plotly URL from that variable. So out is then what I'm assigning this output to, dollar sign response, dollar sign URL, will give you the URL associated with the plotly plot. So let's do it. Okay, there we go. There it brought up my new browser window. And then let me just go back here and just show you how I can get the, the URL. Okay, but now let me also look at my plotly plot. And notice it's a bar plot. Okay, but notice it has some of the interactivity that was actually not present in my original GG plot. So let's look at this plot for a minute. So this class right here is a case-based introduction to biostatistics taught by the great biostatistician Scott Zeger, who's in our department here. And that has 20,000. If it ever runs again, you, get, you, you should take it because you get a chance to really take a class from one of the best biostatisticians out there. Roger's Computing for Data Analysis class, which now is sort of superseded by the R programming class and specialization, had runs of 50,000, 50, 40,000, 83,000, and 65,000. And if you stack them up like this, you see that Roger's total enrollment is about 250,000 from his collection of courses. Jeff Leake, who's sort of the uh, Justin Timberlake of our little boy band here, and uh, he's had a, a single class with over 100,000 in it. This first data analysis class, and uh, 91,000 in the second running. Um, I'm sort of Mr. Consistent here in Mathematical Biostatistics Boot Camp 1 with 16,000, 22,000, 18,000, and 18,000, a fairly very consistent but pedestrian performance by Coursera standards. And then Boot Camp 2, which is the sequel of this class, gets much lower enrollment, 10,000 and close to 7,000. So it's kind of an interesting data set. But let's also play around. Let's see, save and edit. So if I click on save and edit, it'll take me to a new window where I can edit my Plotly plot from the Plotly website. So let's just do one quick example. I think you can load up the website and play around with it. I hope I've given you enough to get started here. But let's take, for example, a theme. <clears throat> So, for example, if I want to change a color theme of my existing plot to this pineapple-looking plot, well, it does feel a great deal more tropical to me, which is good. Um, and then I can switch between, say, this stacked bar chart and a staggered bar chart, so I don't actually have to go back to the R coding, right? So not, not terribly unlike our example in R charts, where we did exactly the same thing. So I have my graph set how I like. I think I like the original stacked bar chart better. And Plotly really has in mind things like sharing your graph. It's kind of a social graphing platform more than anything else. And so if you click on share, you can click share on Twitter or Facebook right here.